Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to connect a series of capacitors connected in series to a voltage supply or a battery, and we're going to connect the same three capacitors, which are now hooked up in parallel to the same 10 volt voltage supply or battery. What we need to do now is determine what we can figure out as far as what's the voltage across each capacitor and what is the charge on each capacitor. Well, when capacitors are connected in parallel and that parallel connection is connected to a battery, we could then say that the voltage across each capacitor is equal to the total voltage supplied to the circuit. So in this case, each of those three capacitors will have a voltage across it equal to the voltage of the battery or 10 volts. And that is the advantage of having capacitors connected in parallel. It's really easy to add them together we simply add the capacitors together, and it's really easy to determine the voltage across each capacitor. Now, what if we want to know the charge in each capacitor? Well, that's also easy to calculate in this particular case, because we know that the charge in a capacitor is simply equal to the product of the capacitance times the voltage, which means the charge on the first capacitor is equal to the capacitance of the first capacitor times the 10 volts across the capacitor, Q2 will be equal to C2 times 10 volts, and Q3 will be equal to C3 times 10 volts. And remember that the unit for charge is coulombs, which means that farads times volts equals coulombs. But when the capacitors are connected in, in series, it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. First of all, trying to find the equivalent capacitance, we have to use the one over rule, and then to try to find the charge on this, well, that is not so difficult, at least the realization that when capacitors are connected in series, the charge on each capacitor must be equal to one another, and it's equal to the total charge on those three capacitors. Although, what does that really mean? What do we mean by total charge? Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. What we can say, though, is this. As the battery is pushing charges through the circuit, that means that we first are going to get a positive charge on top of the, or uh, loaded onto the first plate, which is going to push a positive charge away, which makes this side of the plate negative, but that positive charge will move on to this capacitor, make that side a positive charge, which moves a positive charge away from the other plate on the other side, Oop. and this, so that should be a negative, not a positive, of course. So that would be a negative charge over here, and then that positive charge will move on to this plate, and that will then move a positive charge away and make this negative. And you can see that there's this chain reaction occurring that for every charge that's being pushed onto the first plate of the first capacitor, you have kind of a chain reaction, and you can see that for every one charge placed here, you get a charge here, you get a charge there. When the second charge gets pushed onto this capacitor plate, that means the positive charge will get pushed away of the other side. This becomes negative. That positive charge will deposit itself onto this plate. That makes this side negative because it will push away a positive charge, which will then go settle down onto the third plate. And that means that that side will become negative and so forth. And I think you're beginning to see the picture. And that's why we can say when capacitors are connected in series, each one of them will have the exact same amount of charge, and that charge is equivalent to the total charge. But then at this point, we still don't know what we mean by that. Well, to find the total charge, what we need to do next is to find the equivalent capacitance or total capacitance. So we can say that 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Well, I guess for us to be able to do that, I would need maybe an example of what they might be. So let's say that they're all the same capacitance. Let's say that they're all three farads. So three farads here, three farads there, and three farads there. How do you find the equivalent capacitance, the total capacitance? So one over C total would be equal to one over three plus one over three plus one over three. That means that one over C total is equal to one third plus one third plus one third, which is one, or C total is equal to one farad. So we can replace that whole circuit with a single one farad capacitor. So let's go ahead and do that. So this equivalent circuit will look like this with 
a 10 volt voltage source. So we have 10 volts here and a C total of one farad if those three are each three farads. So that's how we find the total charge on the equivalent capacitor by saying now that Q total is equal to C total times the voltage applied. So in this case, that's going to be the equivalent or total capacitor of one farad multiplied times the voltage applied of 10 volts, which means that this is going to be 10 coulombs of charge on that capacitor. That's a lot of charge, but this is just for illustrative purposes. Now that we know the total, oh, and I forgot the T here for total charge. Now that we have the total charge of the equivalent circuit, the one equivalent capacitor, now we can go back here and say, well, that means that Q1 equals Q2 equals Q3 equals Q total, which is equal to 10 coulombs. And so now we have the charge on each. Now, what if we want to know the voltage on each of the three capacitors? Well, to find that, we can do the following. We can say, using this equation, that the voltage is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. And so in this case, we can say that the voltage on the first capacitor is equal to the charge of the first capacitor. The charge on the first capacitor would be 10 coulombs divided by the capacitance of the first capacitor, which is 3 farads, which is equal to 10 thirds volt. So that means that that capacitor will have 10 thirds of a volt. We can say the same for V2, that would be equal to uh, 10 coulombs divided by 3 farads, which is also 10 over 3 volts. And finally, V3 is equal to 10 coulombs over 3 farads, and I'm kind of running out of room here. That will also be 10 over 3 volts. And now, we should see that if we add all the voltages together, they should add up to the 10 volts applied. So 10 thirds plus 10 thirds plus 10 thirds, that's 30 thirds or 10 volts. And sure enough, we can check by adding them together, we end up with the correct total voltage. So now we know how to go ahead and add the voltages and charges together when we have capacitors either in parallel or in series. In parallel, the voltages are all the same. In series, the charges are all the same. We can then easily calculate the charges in this case by simply multiplying the capacitance of each capacitor times the voltage, which is the same in each case. And over here, we first have to find the equivalent or total capacitance of the series circuit. We find the total capacitance, then, yes, we find the total capacitance, then we find the total charge by multiplying that total capacitance times the voltage. Once we have the total charge, then we realize that each one of the capacitors has that very same charge on it. And that's how it's done.